Roger Wolford. So I want to make a little video here uh, explaining one of the carving techniques I use. It's, uh, it's an inlay carving that is uh, pretty popular. I get quite a few requests from it. I get a lot of questions uh, on YouTube and various places on the internet how it's done. So I thought I'd sit down and just make an instruction video and try to help you guys out. So let's talk about what I'm going to be carving on. I'm going to be carving on this little wooden box that's made from a tree limb. So this limb had fallen and I gathered it and I cut it down and I cut the inside out and sanded it smooth and, and I made a lid for it and I, and I put a bottom on it and I shaped it to the log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve right here on the top of the lid. I'm going to carve this image here, this bear totem, right here on the lid. So everything that's dark here will be carved about an eighth of an inch deep. And uh, then when I'm done, I'll fill it in with the uh, inlay. And here's the inlay. This is a liquid inlay called Inlace. And it works much like a uh, two-part epoxy. You mix the inlay material, which comes in this little paint can. This one is turquoise. It's a very, very nice look. It's turquoise in color with flakes of black and white and tans very nice and you mix it in a little paper cup that's provided in the kit and you mix a little hardener with it stir it together pour it down in your carving let it sit overnight and harden then you come back and you sand off the excess and then polish it and then seal it just like you would wood um, it's actually it's a, it's a plastic or a resin it's not real turquoise but it just it looks fantastic when it's done and it, I get a lot of compliments on it and it's kind of a neat a neat thing to do but one thing I will warn you about the inlays is uh, when you're mixing it up and pouring it, it it smells very strong so you want to be someplace where you have a lot of uh, airflow I'm currently out in my shop which is detached from my house and I open all the doors and windows and fans and uh, you don't want to be trapped in a little room smelling this or you're probably walking out a little bit dizzy so um, let's go back to the pattern here. So what I did with this pattern is I drew this up on a piece of paper and then I scanned it into my computer and then I got into my uh, Microsoft PowerPoint and I took the image and I shrunk it and sized it and got it to where it fits nicely on my box and then I printed it out on computer paper. So it's just normal printer paper. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this Krylon Repositional Easy Tag I'm going to spray on the back of the paper and it'll turn this, this little print out into a repositional sticker. So then I can take that sticker and I can stick it on my box and I can move it around and get centered up where I like it and then I'm going to carve it. So it's, it's a very nice way to transfer an image um, and now I got this image, I drew it up and now I got it on my computer and I can use it many times over and over again if I want and I can make it bigger or smaller and then just keep printing them out and making new uh, stickers to carve with. So um, let's talk a little bit about some of the tools I'll be using before we get started. So my main tool here is is my uh, dental drill. This is a straight shaft dental drill that rotates about 300,000 feet, um, 300,000 RPMs. This one is a uh, Presto, NSK Presto. Um, those of you who followed me in the past, you know this is my primary tool. I, I love this tool. Uh, you just can't carve on other, you just can't carve like you can with this with other tools. Um, the high speeds and the variations in carbides and diamond bits, I mean the hardwoods, glass, metal, it's a wonderful, wonderful versatile tool. And so that's all I'll be using to do the carving with. Um, of course, I'll be wearing my dust mask to help protect me a little bit, and then I'll be wearing my Optivisor so I can get down there and see the fine details. That's most generally how I carve everything. Another thing that's very handy here is my uh, my Razor dust collector, and I'll have the, the piece sitting right here in front of it. So then as I carve, it sucks the smoke and the dust away and filters it, and it's, it's a pretty nice unit. 
You can hear it kick on there. So I always keep that on my workbench. So that's what I'll be using. So uh, sit tight and let's carve this thing up. Let's talk a bit about the burrs I'll be using in my dental drill. The very first one we'll be using is the number 699 carbide taper. This burr works best if it's held perpendicular to the carving surface. So basically straight up and down as much as you can get it. Um, I'll be using this to make the, uh, the outline of the carving, setting the depth of the carving, and I'll be putting it in about, about an eighth of an inch deep. The very next burr will be the number four carbide round. This one works best when it's hold it, held at about a 45 degree angle of the carving surface. And I'll be using it to uh, carve out the inside of the carving where the inlace will be. And the number four is good, it's smaller, it gets down in the tighter spaces. Then I'll briefly use the number eight carbide round. This is just like the number four but larger and I'll be using it to hog out a little bit of material in the bigger areas, set the depths of the carving. Next will be the diamond flame. This will be the very last burr I use in the dental drill and um, it's a long skinny diamond burr and I'll be using it to go up underneath the edges of the carving um, to make my undercut for the end lace. We'll talk more about undercuts later. So I'm starting out with the number 699 carbide tapered burr and as I said earlier I'm trying to hold it fairly close to straight perpendicular with the carving surface. As you can see there I'm just going around the edges of the carving making an outline, setting the depth. Um, I'm pushing it about an eighth of an inch deep. As you can see there's smoke coming from the carving. I'm pushing it a little bit hard because I do want it to burn a little bit of the carving when, as I carve. That leaves a nice dark brown outline to the uh, carving that will also be seen later on even after the inlace is put in. If you notice as I carve this most of my uh, carving strokes will start up top and I'll pull the, the dental drill towards myself. Um, I found that I have more control over my cuts uh, doing it that way rather than pushing it up away from me. Start at the top and then pull towards my body. So I'm carving around the uh, thin arrow that runs through the middle of this bear totem. Um, one thing to note here is you want to stay on the outside edge of that line. Make sure you leave plenty of meat in the middle for the arrow. Otherwise it might break off or get too thin. Um, this is a case where I might even go actually off the pattern a little bit and make it a bit thicker. Here's just a quick photo showing the uh, 699 and the depth of the cut. Next here is the photo, everything carved out through the paper and ready to be peeled off. So I've switched to my number four carbide round. Now I'm carving the inside of the carving out. This is where the inlace will be poured. So the number four, it's a smaller ball, works best if it's held at about a 45 degree angle. So I'm carving to the depth that we had set earlier with the 699 carbide taper. So I want to, you want to maintain that eighth of an inch deep cut all throughout the carving. Um, this will allow a nice area where the uh, inlays can pool inside the carving. You may need that depth or later when you're sanding out. So I, it's very important to keep the eighth of an inch deep cut. So 
So I've sped up the video a little bit. So I'm still continuing to use the number four carbide round. So I'm cleaning out the inside of the carving. Like I said, getting down in the tight spaces, uh, maintaining that eighth of an inch deep cut. So I'm switching to my number eight carbide round right now. And I'm going back through and just cleaning out the larger areas, making sure that we have that eighth of an inch depth cut. So here I'm just running a straight edge over the top, making sure that everything's to depth. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the undercut. So this is very important when it comes to inlace. So the very first picture here shows a carving that has no undercut at all. If you don't have any undercut, the inlace could pop right out of your carving. As the wood expands and shrinks, it could force the inlace right out of the carving. You really need a undercut or something at the bottom of the carving to uh, anchor the inlace within the carving. So the inlace will go in as a liquid and it goes up underneath the undercut and then as it dries it gives it some sort of anchor to stay within the carving. This is very very important. Please do not skip this step or your inlace could fall right out of your carving. Here's a photo showing the diamond flame and just how deep it's going up underneath the edge for the undercut. So here I got the diamond flame in my dental drill. I'm just going around the edges of the carving, down at the base of the carving, forcing it up underneath the edge, making the undercut. The undercut doesn't have to be super deep, just enough to anchor the inlace in. So just go all the way around the carving. I've reduced my PSI a little bit on this. I think I'm using 20-25 PSI. Uh, you don't need a lot for this diamond burr to cut. Here's a photo of the carving ready to be poured with the inlace. So here I'm ready to begin mixing up the inlace. So if you see my carving there, I had the uh, carving all masked off of masking tape. So I'm opening up the turquoise inlace, giving it a quick stir, and then I'm going to put it into a paper cup. Uh, this is a note this for inlays. You always use paper cup. You don't want to use plastic. The ingredients of the inlays can uh, react to the plastic. So no plastic, paper, or with a wooden popsicle stick there. So notice how I'm being careful not to get the inlays all over the top of the can. It just makes a mess. So I'm holding the paper cup over the top of the inlays can, making sure none of the drips go around the edges of the can. So I'm weighing it on my scale there, and roughly for this carving, I think I'm going to use about a 0.95 of an ounce, not quite a full ounce, to fill the carving. So yeah, it looks like 0.90. So I'm sealing up the end lace, putting the lid back on. So now I'm going to add the hardener to the end lace. So it's... 25 to 30 drips of hardener per one ounce. So 
So I'm just shy of an ounce, so I'm probably using about 22 so drips here. So I get all the hardener in, you mix it up. So at this point when it gets mixed, you got about 15 to 20 minutes to use this stuff before it starts setting up hard. So don't dilly dally around. So now I'm just kind of drizzling it in within the carving. Just letting it fall down within the carving. And as I said earlier, I've masked off the edges of the lid there. Just if I get drips, I don't want to have to sand it off later. Just to protect the wood a little bit. I don't really want to sand off any more than I have to. Here's the photo showing the inlays, just where I've drizzled it into the carving. So now I'm using a, uh, that's a finishing nail taped to a piece of dowel rod. A toothpick or anything like that would work just fine. But I'm just pushing the inlays around within the carving um, to make sure it releases any air bubbles and to get it up underneath the uh, undercut. Just keep pushing it around, moving it around, make sure it fills up the carving. So, as I said earlier, this inlace has a very strong smell. So, I've got, right now, I've got fans going, and i got windows open and doors open in my shop. Plenty of ventilation. So, please make sure that you are, you're not in a little tight room where you can't get a lot of air movement. This stuff does smell very strong, and, like I said, you could probably be walking out dizzy if you don't have proper airflow. So now I'm just going through and just filling up the rest of the carving, getting it all the way full. So here I'm going to tap the bottom of the uh, carving. That's just to pack the inlays down and push any air bubbles out. Here's a photo showing the carving full of the inlays. This is another important step when we're working with the end lace. Um, you want to make sure the carving is totally full above the edge of the wood. So, like in the picture here, you want to make sure it's properly filled with end lace. Once sanded, the top picture there will have a good even surface. So in the bottom picture there, you can see where uh, there's a gap where it's lower than the edge of the wood. So if it's not filled to the top of the surface of the wood, after you're done sanding, there'll be a low spot or a void, and you'll have to repair it and pour it again. So you wanna make sure that you get it all the way full. This is a tricky step. You don't wanna to get too much inlays piled on top of your carving because that's just that much more sanding you'll have to do. But you wanna be sure that you get it everything above the wood surface. So I'm just taking the remainder of the end lace and just piling it on top to make sure I'm above the wood surface everywhere within the carving. Just kind of smear it around. So now I'm just taking a look at it and see, see if I got any voids that I need to fill. There's a couple there in the middle. I'm tapping the bottom just to level it out. Examine it again to make sure there's no voids. Okay, so my inlace is set for 24 hours or more. Now I'm peeling off the masking here and I'm going to begin sanding. So I got my Fordham flex shaft there and I have a two inch sanding drum in it. I think it's about an 80 grit drum on there. So now the end lace is rock solid hard. 
So now I'm just going to, all the inlays we piled on top, I'm going to get rid of it there with the sanding drum. So you want to be very careful here. You want to keep that sanding drum parallel to the wood surface. You don't want to gouge it down in there because that's just, you'll have to repair that later and you have to sand more off and more off. So be careful here. I'm using light pressure. I've sped up the video here so it looks like I'm going a lot faster than what I really am. But I'm just getting rid of that top surface. And I go down until I can just barely see the carving start peeking through the inlays. So I carved it down to where I can just barely see the carving through the inlays. This is where I stop with the drum. So next I'm going to move on over to the uh, belt sander. I'm just going to push it onto the belt sander here. I've got a, I think it's a 120 grit belt on there. And I'm just getting it all off so I can see the carving flat with the surface. So there it is. It's been belt sanded. And just the inlays is left that stays within the carving. So now I'm going to hand sand it just to kind of get it nice and smooth and polished it down. So I think I'm starting with 180 grit there and I'm going to sand it all the way down to uh, 600 grit. And the 4 600 grit it kind of gives it a nice polished look. I want to make it nice and smooth. So as you can see it polished it up, smoothed it out, looks pretty good. So I'm going to coat everything with a uh, Danish oil, the whole box here. And the Danish oil is thin, so just throw it all on, just kind of smear it around, let it soak in. Then take a clean drag, dry rag and you clean off all the excess. Then set it aside and let it dry. And I'll repeat the process for the lid. So my Danish oil is dried, now I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a uh, wood finishing wax over the top of the whole thing. This gives it a nice sheen, a nice glossy finish, and it helps protect the wood also. So you just smear this on, I'm using a uh, cotton patch there, just a, any clean dry rag will work. You just give it a nice light coat of this wax, it works about the same as car wax. Just give it a nice thin coat, then you let it dry a little bit and then buff it back off. The instructions for the wax is right on the can, so they vary by different companies. So now I'm going to buff off the wax and that's it, I'll be a finished product. So I got a clean dry rag there and I'm just, it's set for 10 or 15 minutes and I'm buffing it off and it, you can see the shine starting to peek through. Just go through the whole thing and buff it down clean and that's it, we're done.